a long time ago, there weren't many centrifugal pumps, and now centrifugal pumps seem to have taken over. What, what kind of things happened to them? Well, one of the things that happened was that a way was devised to operate a pump without a lot of moving parts. In fact, with only one moving part. And that's it? That's it, the impeller. How does that one moving part pump water? Well, as it spins, it creates a vacuum at the impeller eye. Water comes in through the eye and goes out the ports. And that's, so it's sort of sucking because it's throwing water out the edge? You might put it that way. Centrifugal pumps used to be known for not being able to develop a lot of pressure. That's right. They couldn't pump a lot of pressure, but by adding a, a uh, diffuser to the pump, we were able to increase the pressure as it came out of the impeller to what we needed. That uh, looks like it uses some physics principle I should remember from high school. Yes, it's got something to do with Bernoulli's theorem. And you can get all the pressure you want then out of, a, out of just that impeller? Not really, but you can get it with more than one impeller by using a multiple stage pump with lots of impellers. Am I likely to find something like that in my cottage basement? Not really. You don't need the kind of pressure that that will develop. But, well, how many, how many impellers would you go up to in a home Probably system? two. For a domestic system, two impellers to give you enough pressure to meet your requirements. Then there's the centrifugal pump can't lift water very far problem. Well, it used to be that way, but when Jacuzzi invented the deep well injector pump, that all changed. We have a deep well injector that enables us to pump water from deep wells still with only one moving part. That's the thing that has the two hoses. That's right. One hose or pipe pumps water down one side and water comes up the suction side right up into the centrifugal pump on the ground. So there's always a great circuit of water running between the pump and the injector in a loop. That's right. Water is pumped down and goes through this nozzle right here and then up into the venturi. And somehow magically convinces the water from the well to go along for the ride. Well, that's sort of sure. Let's let's <laughs> let's put it that way. This is like perfume bottle venturi. Exactly. Car carburetor. Again, you're using the principle of high velocity through a nozzle, creating a vacuum, pulling water up from the well, and going up through the venturi tube and then up to the surface. And then, in some cases, the injector part can be right on the front of the pump. Yes, it can, and that's usually found on a pump of this type, which is a convertible jet pump. And when we say convertible, we mean that the pump can be used to lift from shallow wells or shallow lifts. What kind of a lift do you consider shallow? A shallow lift is anything 25 feet or less. So for over 25 feet? Then we would remove this injector, put this adapter on, and take the injector and put in this larger venturi in place of this one, and then put this down in the well and connect the pipes from here to here and here. There's also a pump that fits right down in the well, only it looks a little expensive to me. That's the deep well submersible pump, but it's all relative. We can pump water with a submersible pump, one half horsepower that would take a one horsepower jet pump to do oh. the same job. So you can't just compare in the catalog horsepower for horsepower? No you get lots more efficiency from the submersible at lesser cost. Now there are more components to a water system than just the pump. There's the tank for one thing. Okay, the tank is an important part of the water system because it makes the system automatic. We don't want to have to go over and turn the switch off and on every time we want a glass of water. The only way we can get that pressure is by compressing air in the tank. It's like a big spring. We take a charge of air and we compress it and then when the pump reaches its high pressure for shutoff, this pressure switch will cut the pump off and the, the system then will sit at 50 pounds pressure, for example. There's a classic symptom when the, the air at the top of the tank is lost, isn't there? Yes, there is, and it's called water logging. And it means that your pump will start and stop even though a small amount of water is withdrawn from the tank. So there are some other things on the system that that maintain the air in the top of the tank? Well, that's right. That's called the air charger, which is mounted right on the side of the tank and puts air in the tank whenever it's required. 
the jet charger will automatically put water into the tank whenever the water level gets above this elbow that threads into the tank. Okay? And there are other systems? There are other ways to do it. Uh, there's three common ways. One is to install a float in the tank that separates the air and the water. And then there's another method used where you put a diaphragm in the tank separating air from water. Now the diaphragm doesn't float but it makes complete separation and the third method is to put a bag inside the tank. Those last two are to prevent the air from being absorbed into the water, are they? That's right. Water under pressure will absorb air. And then you're trying to put yourself right out of the tank business with this thing. Not really. What we're trying to provide is city-like water. In other words, we want to provide our people with water the same as you'd get in the city at a uniform pressure and a uniform flow. And we do that by using the Aquagenie valve in combination with a small accumulator. The accumulator, or tank if you wish, holds a pint of water. And that enables us to build up pressure to shut the pump off and make it automatic. But there's another trick hiding in there. That's right. In here is a means of isolating the pressure switch from the system so that you continue to get a constant flow and pressure. The pump is running all the time when there's a demand for water. Come on now, Honest, are there any drawbacks to this? Yes, there are. Uh, if you have leaky plumbing, leaky faucets, that pint of water in here will drain out and the pump will start when really there is no real demand for water. Well, that's great. Actually, I just came in to look at the bathtubs. Well, why don't we go over and take a look at okay. it?